In the previous lesson, we looked at example one here and how to identify all these different definitions that we've been coming up with. Uh, so what are vertically opposite angles, alternate interior, corresponding, interior, same side of the transversal, supplementary, alternate exterior, and there's many more, uh, which in lesson number one we found out in all of these red abbreviations. <clears throat> what we're going to do is just finish off uh, some more examples and how to use measurements, and we will be using those red abbreviations for all of these next examples. So what it's saying is determine the measure of each required angle in the order given and give the reason for your answer. So not only do we have to find out what the measurement is, we also have to give a reason for that measurement. So what I showed in the last example or the last lesson was just this first example. We know that these two angles, 128 and angle 2, have to add up to 180. And the reason for that is that they're supplementary. So we found out that angle, <clears throat> angle 2 is 52 degrees, and that's because... Angles on a line equal 180 degrees. Now something you want to do in these future examples is when you find out an angle, add it to the picture. So you will see me modeling, adding the angle measurements to the actual diagram as that will help us find future angles. Now in this next example, it says determine the measure of angle 3. Now what we notice is that all of these angles meet at that point, that green point, and this is 90 degrees. So we know that all the angles around a point add up to 360. So if I take 360 and subtract all the given angles, the 60, the 90, and the 85, so subtract 60, subtract 90, and subtract 85, the measurement remaining is that remaining angle. So angle 3 is 125 degrees. And the reason for that, as per the red definitions, is that angles on a point equal 360 degrees. Okay? Uh, next one. <clears throat> We're determining angle 4 first. It said we have to go in the order given to us, and we shouldn't find any extra uh, angles. Okay, so angle 4. This will be start becoming more uh, difficult before it gets easier, for sure. But if we look at these two parallel lines... Again, in some lessons we looked at parallel lines and a transversal. You'll notice that angle 4 and angle 57 fall within the interior on the same side of the transversal. Or in other words, if you remember we had this little C rule where those two add up to 180 degrees. And that's the case here, although it's a sideways C. Okay, So angle 4 and 57 have to add up to 180. So if we do 180 minus... 57, we will get 123 degrees. So angle 4 has to be 123 degrees. I'm going to erase this right now. And that's because interior angles on the same side of the transversal equal 180 degrees. And you will get more familiar with these. Okay, angle 5. And again, I'm going to add the 123 degrees in here. Now what you'll notice about angle 5 is that angle 4 and angle 5, see these intersecting lines? Again, you'll get more familiar with this. They are opposite from each other. Those are called vertically opposite angles, so they have to be the same. So angle 5 is also 123 degrees, and that's because vertically opposite angles are equal. And where you'll find that diagram, and where you'll find that abbreviation, and where you'll start picking this up, is in your notes. Again, you can see it way up here. Here's vertically opposite angles right here. Okay, And you'll start to know what to look for. And again, ask for help in class, and I can help you along your way here. Uh, so angle 6. There's a number of ways to find angle 6, but what I'm going to look at here in particular is maybe this line here. So what we know is that angle 5 and angle 6, since those are on the same side of the line, they have to add up to 180 degrees. Again, angles on a line have to equal 180. So we know that angle 6 has to be 57 degrees, and that's because angles on a line equal 180 degrees. Okay, uh, let's look at a few more. So we're done that one. <clears throat> Just a few more examples here. Uh, here's a triangle. And this is an isosceles triangle. What these lines here that I'm highlighting in green indicate is that they indicate that they are the same length. And what we learned 
<clears throat> is that angles that are opposite those sides, so in other words, angle 3 and the 70 degree angle, those are equal to each other. So angle 3 is also 70 degrees. Okay, And the reason for that is, if you look at your triangle properties, is that angles that are opposite the equal sides, sorry, the equal sides are equal to each other. Okay, And again, when you find out an angle, leave it inside the diagram. It might help you find a, a future one. So that's why I left the 70 here. And the next thing that we know is that inside a triangle, all of the angles have to add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus a pair of 70s, I get 40 degrees. So this angle here has to be 40 degrees. And the reason is because angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. Okay. And here's the last example before I let you practice some on your own. Uh, angle 1. <clears throat> I identify these very quickly because uh, I've seen things like it regularly. You, you folks will probably struggle with this uh, initially. So ask lots of questions and I can give you some hints for finding these. So angle one, I can see a triangle here. And I know that all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. So if I take the two angles that I know and subtract them from 180, so if I do 180 minus 40 minus 65, that will give me the remaining angle, which is 75 degrees. So I know that angle 1 is 75 degrees. And that's because angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. And again, I'll erase the highlighting, but I would like you to write in 75 degrees inside your diagram. Okay? Angle 2. Now, angle 2, you could be thinking, well, here's a triangle here. The issue is that we don't have two out of the three angles, so we can't find angle two um, by using the angles in a triangle property. But here's what we will do. If you see these two blue parallel lines, and this transversal here in pink, what you'll see is you sort of have a sideways letter F. And if you remember, the F rule says that the two that are in the armpit are equal to each other. So in other words, if you look at this 65 and angle two, those are going to be equal to each other. <clears throat> so we know that angle 2 is going to be 65 degrees. And you may want to look back in your notes. Those are actually called corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are equal to each other. Okay, so I'll erase that. And again, as usual, when you find out a new angle, add it to your diagram. Okay, next, angle 3. Now, angle 3... <clears throat> If I use these two parallel lines once again, and a new transversal, you may remember that there is something called the Z rule. If these two are parallel, then the two that are in the armpits of the Z are equal to each other. So if you turned your page around, you'd see that the two, line, two blue lines are parallel, and the pink line could be a transversal, meaning that the 30 degree angle and angle 3 are equivalent to each other. So angle 3 is 30 degrees, and those are called, if you look back in your notes, again, those are called alternate interior angles, and they're equal to each other. Okay, they're on the inside of the parallel lines, and they're on alternate sides of the transversal. That's where the alternate interior comes from. So this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. Next, angle 4. Here's a straight line. Sometimes it's not based on parallel lines, and we know that 75 and angle 4 make a straight line, so angle 4 has to be 180 minus 75, which is 105. Okay, so angle 4 is 105 degrees, and that's because angles on a line equal 180 degrees. And finally, well, let me add that to the diagram, because that might help us find a future angle. So that's 105 degrees. And finally, angle 5. Probably the easiest way to find angle 5 is what we've done earlier, is we've got a triangle here, and we know two out of the three angles. Okay, so if we do 180 and subtract the two angles that we know, 180 minus 30 minus 105, we get 45 degrees. So angle 5 is 45 degrees. And the abbreviation or the reason we knew that is because angles in a triangle 
equal 180 degrees. So what you're going to want to do next is try and digest that, and then move ahead in your study guide and do these following questions, and I will check up on you to see how it's going.